I am extremely honored to have Melanie Campbell with us, President and CEO of the National Coalition for Black Civic Participation and the convener of the Black Women's Roundtable. Melanie, welcome to Let's Talk. Yeah, we need you to cut your uh, cut your mic on. Uh, glad to be here. Happy yeah. Friday. Thank you. Good thank you. I, I love that sweatshirt. What's it say? Power? Yeah. Power of the ballot. <laughs> Power of the ballot. Okay. All right, folks. It's a, it's crazy that we have to keep reminding people of that, right? Yes. Yes. But we did. Primaries are even harder. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So um, tell us, you know, what you've been up to with regards to, um, I mean, a lot of people know about the National Coalition for Black Civic Participation. You are not a secret in America. You are at the forefront of making sure that um, uh, everybody, but especially black folks, are uh, involved and engaged. But what, what, do you, what are you all doing right now to make sure that we are getting people out for the primaries that are coming up? Well. Uh, Denise, you know, we have something we call the Unity Power in the Ballot campaign, nonpartisan, right? And uh, it's got multifaceted, built a coalition, We're trying to get as many of our organizations to work together under what we call a unity banner. Uh, we have a bus tour in Maryland because they have the prime presidential primary going on. And Maryland uh, will have a lot to, uh, to say about uh, the what the power looks like dynamics in in Congress next year as well as the White House. Um, so we're here. Uh, we started. Uh, I think it was on the second of of, of, of May, um, and we've been pushing. Uh, no, not even the second of May. It was uh, on um, a couple of days before that. But we've been out here pushing uh, to educate our community, get them to vote in the early primary in Maryland, which was May second through the ninth. That's over. And now election day is uh, May 14th. And so there's a lot of information, not just the black community. A lot of times people don't realize the importance of a primary and that they need to vote in the primary and in the general election in November. So what we're hearing on the streets is people didn't realize there was an election coming up. So we're educating and informing and engaging uh, uh, everywhere we can get to. We have a bus tour. We have folks... Uh, we're working real close with uh, Reverend Tony Lee and and, uh, and Nico Hobson and others. Uh, they're hitting the clubs at night. We're hitting the churches of souls through the polls. Uh, we, on radio, we are, we're putting information in the black newspapers, getting information out to our community to be aware that there's an election and what's at stake uh, in the election. The power of the ballot is understanding that the ballot is not just about the candidate, but what the candidate's going to do and the issues that are important to our communities when we're under such attack uh, with our rights and freedoms, this election will determine what kind of country we live in uh, uh, come January 2025. You know, Melanie, you you all have boots on the ground. You're out there talking to people. What is it, besides the fact of lack of knowledge, of not mm -hmm. knowing that there's a primary, mm -hmm. but is, is there, what is the resistance if you're finding that? And how are you trying to overcome the resistance of people even want to to, to participate this year? First of all, listening, right? Just listen to somebody. You know, when they say, hey, I'm not going to vote, you know, you ask the question, why? Is there something? And then you listen to what they have to say. And a lot of times you can convince somebody that they have more power than they realize and, and, and that they've been let down by uh, elected officials or or and things like that. Or sometimes they, you know, they may have... Uh, not have the ability, th think they don't have the ability to, to vote because they don't know that if you've had a, uh, you know, have been incarcerated, that you you can vote. Um, or in some cases, uh, they just have been turned off. So you try to listen. That's the first and foremost thing. And then share what you know. So when they tell you what, what would make you vote, have the conversation. It's a lot of work, which is why coalition is so important because you have to have the ability to knock on those doors, uh, uh, talk to folks in the shopping, you know, shopping centers in the, on the parking lot, uh, be in the clubs, do whatever we need to be at the churches and share and listen. Because a lot of times you people say, oh, they're, they, they're just apathetic. I don't believe in apathy. I believe that people many times have been uh, let down and they feel like the system is just not is up against them. And then when you're able to do that, sometimes you can turn people around and they can go ahead and take that ballot uh, and use it because there's power in it or they wouldn't be 
in Maryland is not one of the places that you have really bad voting laws, but in a lot of places where black people live, they continue to, Georgia is a place that just recently passed an, another set of voter suppression laws because they don't want us to use that ballot as a power to, to make a difference in our community. And I was just, that's where I was going to go next. I mean, talking about that, I know the last couple of election cycles, there was a whole lot of conversation about voter suppression and, and mm -hmm. You and other organizations were keeping a watchful eye on, um, you know, just how people, if people were able to vote, and, and you know, what were some of the barriers to that. Um, but uh, you know, you talk about Atlanta. What are you seeing right now that um, you know you're having to uh, overcome when it comes to, or inform and educate voters when it comes to voter suppression? And is it still clearly? You said it's still happening, but where and how? Right. Like I'll use uh, Georgia as an example with the governor just passing uh, a law, law, a new set of voter suppression laws that make it where uh, uh, the Voting Rights Act doesn't really have the power that it needs to monitor because of a case from 2013. Right. Um, and we haven't done the reform. So, for instance, changing polling places at the last minute. And being able to and making it where you know you make you make it where you can if you're out here like an organization like ours making it harder for us and, and passing laws to make it you know illegal to give somebody water things like those kinds of things that matter and then um making it so that people and then you have people who are just doing things that have nothing to do with the law but they spread bad information uh we were part of a lawsuit uh that the lawyers committee led for us that we won uh, in a case where people make phone calls and threaten and tell you that if you have a, a speeding ticket or if you uh, got issues with child support, that if you go vote, that you're going to end up getting locked up. So people are target our communities uh, in many, many different various ways. Um, so we have to make sure that folks know we spread that number one eight six six our vote. So if you feel like you're having problems at the polls, pick up that phone and call the election protection um, and. The, the reality is, and I, and I say it to especially younger pe people, that if they if it didn't matter, they surely would be passing laws to block you from using it. Right? Mm -hmm. And finally, it was, and if, if there are folks who study, uh, and, and this is fact and not being partisan, it's the primarily the Republican Party that does this uh, and targets black and brown voters. Why? Because we are a force when it comes to swinging an election one way or the other. And if you can find a way to skim that off or get bad information and, uh, you know, uh, go after like a lot of the um, attacks on social in, through social media goes after black young young people, black and brown young people, getting them uh, bad information, you know, even about candidates. That's not true. So it's, so you're always, um, you know, fighting that force. But, you know, we, we look at the hand that's dealt and try to uh, uh, shift our strategies um, but most importantly, is encouraging people. To, you know, I to, think that it I, matters. One, yeah, I, and I think you know, like you said, we only we only represent uh, what 13, 14 percent of the population in America. Mm -hmm. However, voting is down all across, all across yeah. the board, right? And mm -hmm. but so when it comes to people actually turning out to vote, and with the effort that you all and others have been engaged in, our numbers are. Could be represented so much higher. Actually, that's that's why I think the threat is there because we're doing, you all are doing so much. We all are, even the black press, to try to make sure right, that we exactly. keep our numbers high, because then we can control a lot of those that election yeah. turnout. On the flip side of voter suppression, um, what have you seen that really seems promising? I know that there's some places where you can uh, what register on the same day that you vote. I mean, yes. there's, there's some doors are opening. Uh, in, in like the District yeah. of Columbia, if you're an ex-offender or a returning citizen, you can vote. You can vote even if you're locked up <laughs> in D.C. Yeah, right, jail. Right. So t talk about some of those things. Yeah. Well, because we're right here in Maryland, we're right now in Baltimore, and when I get off with you, we're about to hit these Baltimore streets, right, and, 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 and get out here on this bus and, and hit some canvassing in neighborhoods and shopping centers and wherever we can find folks. Um but in Maryland, if you're not registered to vote, you can show up on Tuesday, May the 14th, and register and vote. So the, so the states like that, and then you have a state like Georgia that's trying to suppress. Right. So it always depends on where you are. States 
have a lot of control over, over the systems and because we, we still need to reform federally voting rights uh, reform uh, where, where the Justice Department can monitor to make sure people's votes are protected not as strong because of you know prior Supreme Court cases. We have every state is a little bit different. So we have to look every where we're working and educate our folks on knowing what their rights are and what their opportunities are to exercise the, their power with, through the power of that vote, power of the ballot. We're gonna have hundreds of thousands of college students walking across the stage to get that piece of paper over the next couple of weeks. Um, what are you finding on college campuses? Are they uh, engaged? Uh, I know here in the District of Columbia, we heard from the mm -hmm. Board of Elections that they were in surprised by the increased number of young people that are registering. Now, we don't know what the turnout's going to be, but they're registering. Yes. So, and, then, and, that's, and that's hard to, to, hard to, 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 to gauge. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the states that we've been um, as well, uh, young people are tuning in. They are concerned. Uh, the biggest concern you hear on college campuses right now is what's going on uh, in the Middle East, quite frankly. So, um, so that's a, a big issue, that, and you see what's happening. It's not disconnected what's happening with a lot of the uh, uh, protests that you're seeing across the country, um, and young people are connecting that to uh, the presidency election. And so I think we will see a higher turnout. We'll see what that looks like, um, but, um, but, they're, but they're tuned in. Great, great. Well, I know you 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 got work to do out there uh, to get folks organized. Anything you want to share with us before we we let you go? Um, just uh, to anybody listening out there, uh, whether you live in Maryland or not, uh, uh, encourage your family, your friends to turn out and vote in the Maryland primary. If you uh, if you are a Maryland person uh, and you're not sure where to go, go to vote.org, vote.org, and it can tell you where you can go vote. Uh, and if you're not registered, you can still register. Own that power, right? Our ancestors um, fought for us to have it. Let's not not misuse it by sitting it on the dresser. Take it and take that time and use that power to make a difference for yourself, your family, and community. Melanie Campbell, thank you so very much for being with us. Thanks for all the work that you've been doing. And, uh, you know, and you too, my sister. Pay, hopefully it'll pay off on Tuesday. <laughs> And thanks for sharing the word and making sure our, our folks are informed with good information. Appreciate you. All right. Likewise. Have a good one. Okay.